Hi, welcome back to the Path to Profit podcast. I'm Dr. Minette Ryer, along with my husband, Brad Dobson. Mm -hmm. Happy to see you guys back here. We're busy getting geared up for our upcoming Creative Business Summit happening at the end of March. You've been hearing us talk a lot about it over the last few episodes, and it's coming soon. We're so excited. So we just totally rebranded this year. Lots of fun new content. And we're extra excited to have Nicole Lewis Kieber on the show with us today. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we were talking before the show just saying we're interviewing someone that really does something very similar to what we do, but everybody has such a unique perspective. And I hear so many entrepreneurs, especially when they're starting out, get so concerned about why would I want to talk to someone who does exactly what I do? So I want to talk in the show about that as well. But first, I'll leave with a quote, and then Brad will tell everybody a little bit more about Nicole. And the, the quote is, money is only a tool. It will take you wherever you wish, but it will not replace you as the driver. It's a quote from Ayn Rand. Oh, we went there. We went oh, deep. <laughs> from the beginning. Interesting. Okay. Read a little bit about Nicole. Nicole is a money mindset master with a background in therapy and life coaching. Using a conversational, engaging, humor-infused approach to complex challenges, Nicole's talks and coaching programs guide business owners, coaches, and healers to reveal and release their underlying blocks and barriers to financial abundance. Oh yeah, we're going to go deep on this one. <laughs> so that they can master their mind, heal their heart, empower their future, and make some damn money. <laughs> Nicole lives in Lancaster, Pennsylvania with her husband Jason and three fat, happy cats. It's well known that Nicole loves 80s music, a good martini, and a heartfelt snark-filled conversations <laughs> with friends. Oh, bring on That's the snark! Perfect. You know, I've, nice. I I spent my kids' uh, whole growing up teaching them snark, and now it's coming back to bite. Oh me. no! <laughs> Welcome again, Nicole. Thank you. So Thank excited. You. So we'd love to start just by tell us in your words a little bit about you and what have you got going on? What's really um, present or possible for you in your business right now? Yeah, well, as you know, business is always evolving, <laughs> and um, you know who we work with comes to us, doesn't it? I mean, we think we're going to work with one client, and we end up working with someone else. So true. Yeah, so staying open to the flow, right? Um, so what I'm doing is uh, in my business because I have this therapy background, um, and you know, I've worked with a lot of people. Uh, I've worked with military. I've worked with, you know, mental health clients, you know, and people with substance abuse issues. I've really worked with just about everybody. Nice. Um, and so, you know, it's really given me a rich background to, um, to understand the human condition in all areas, you know, including our business. And what I have found in working that with um, my clients is that I'm, that women are really drawn to me, women in business, entrepreneurs, healers, Oh, those psychic income people, they, they really like to work with me. So, um, and what the, the thread, the common thread is that they've all had some kind of complex or traumatic event in their past that's showing up in their money and their business now. So I really never imagined that as a coach, I would be working with people around trauma, but that's what seems to be coming up. And I don't want to scare anyone with the T word, but you know, we all have experiences that form our behaviors around money and other you know, areas of our life. And that's one of them. And so that is who I tend to be working with right now are women in business who are, you know, powerful, they're self led, and either they're creating a financial future for themselves by becoming an entrepreneur, and they're bumping up against their stuff. Or um, there are women who've been in business for a while that are really looking to up level their business to whatever that means for them. For some people, they like to use terms like seven figures or whatever. It's whatever it means to them to up level. Right, it could be getting out of five figures even or a yep. thousand bucks a month. You know, I find that no matter what income level women are at, that there's always a ceiling that they hit before they can go to the next level. There's always that limiter, right, that comes up. So no matter what. So those seem to be the, the two groups of people that I tend to be working with right now. So yeah, and they came to me. And then you mentioned you're in the middle of relaunching your website and yeah. So I'm just curious, what kind of fun stuff, what are you really excited about for this year? I'm really excited about a couple of things. I, um, I created an online program, like we need more, one more of those, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, people need you. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I was, con- you know, I'll be honest with you, I was a little concerned about creating this program because as a therapist, I'm really used to holding space for people. And mm-hmm. as a coach, I'm really used to holding you know, space for that transformation. And I wondered, you know, would I be able to do the same thing in this online program? But what I found is a lot of people were not able to work with me either yet or at all because of, you know, financial, it's funny, you're a mindset coach and people have money issues. They can't, you know, it's like this vicious cycle. And so I really didn't want to leave anyone behind. And so I created this online program and I'm really excited about it because we did a beta launch in the fall. And all of my one-on-one clients went through it because I wanted to make sure the integrity was there and they knew what I did. And they were like, it's okay, you're fine. So I'm really excited about that because I'm going to be launching it on a bigger scale in the spring, probably towards the end of March. So that's super exciting to me in general. And just, you know, more opportunities to speak in front of more people. It's just really super exciting when you begin to be seen as the expert in your field that you are. It's really fun. Perfect. I love that. And so I want to just go back to a couple of things you said. So first, I just want to acknowledge and thank you for just being vulnerable and sharing where you are in your business, as well as what you're excited about and how intimately connected those two things are. Mm-hmm. And it made me think about one, a course I took uh, last fall about creating courses. And also something that one of our mentors said last week about, he says that the future of business is in not the best products, but in the best experiences. And the more um, powerful the experience that you create for people, the more transformation they have, the more viral it goes, the more success everybody has. And I think there's probably a lot of people, especially one-on-one coaches and mentors like you who are sitting in that space of, oh, I can't possibly recreate myself or I can't possibly create the same experience in a course that I can one-on-one. And I beg to differ as a lifelong you know, teacher and educator, if it's done well and you still create community, you can do it. There's an art to creating safety when you're talking about money mindset Mm -hmm. and you can easily do it in groups as well as you can one-on-one. So I just want to applaud your success, not surprised at all. And your courage to just go there, right? Understanding that it's the next level of growth and opportunity for you personally in your own business. Well, we have to practice what we preach, right? You know, (laughs) financial wealth, you know, abundance, thinking outside the box about what it means to make money and what money is all about. And so, yeah. And just, so just keep going there. What does it mean to make money and what's that all about? I really just believe, I believe that money is a, is a way that we show appreciation. And that's what we chose as a society on how to do that. And that money, money is really just that. Um, and when we give it away begrudgingly, I think that we, um, we limit ourselves. We, we miss an opportunity to show the universe, God, whomever, you know, that we're grateful for what we have to be able to spend it and that more pleases would be great, you know. Um, so really, I just feel like money is energy. It's a way that we show appreciation and we tag a lot of crap <laughs> to it that isn't necessary. Um, and so that is why money mindset coaches, I believe are, are necessary and needed, particularly in the entrepreneurial world, because you know, bottom line, our bottom line is what we do to make money. Right. And if we have junk hanging out there, it's going to affect us. I'm interested. Uh, so you talked about trauma, uh, the T word, as you said, um, uh, you know, impacting people's view of money. Um, a lot of times, and also then you were talking about how, how you view money. And one of the things that we see a lot with our clients, we see a lot of them associating a, an ick factor with, with <laughs> making money. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I think we see a lot of them actually with, asking for money, even more than making money. They're okay making money, but when it comes to them asking for money, it's yeah. the sticking point. I think yeah. we also see that. I know Minette does the, all of the coaching part of the, of the role and, and she sees some trauma or, or early, early adult, early childhood events that, that impact them. But then there's also this ickiness factor, I think, that, that, they, um, that they get. So do, you ha- do those things bundle together? Or uh, I'm interested in how, how you sort of uh, pull those things apart in your coaching. Sure. This is my experience, again, because I focus mostly on women. I have male clients, too, but women are the ones who feel safest with me, and I'll take it, you know, whatever, (laughs) 
whoever I'm supposed to work with, I'm fine with that. And um, so, you know, one of the statistics that I have read recently that drives me nuts, insane, is that 80% of women owned businesses will close within the first 18 months. Okay. That's nuts. That should not ever, ever happen. Yeah, we should actually, flip. statistically true for all businesses. We should flip it, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's so funny. We share that stat on our summit page. It, it's, um, and well, and it's just, it just shows that, you know, and, you know, again, I, I always focus on women in the stat, but I know it, it, what they say, one in three Americans are becoming entrepreneurs or business owners. Yeah. So there's no you know, no loss of people who are going to hit up against their, their money stuff. Right. So, but particularly with women is that we are so capable of all things, you know, our businesses don't struggle because of strategy, um, because we don't know what we're doing. Um, women are often the top salespeople on, on sales teams. There is something very different about selling yourself than selling someone else's product. Yeah. So when you have to sell yourself and step up and be visible in a way that feels vulnerable, that's where all those you know, traumatic events, you know, um, can really pop up to make a woman or man, not going to want to say man, that not that men don't have this experience. Um, there, a spotlight gets put on you that feels very, very uncomfortable. And there's a little, that voice as we were talking about, that little voice says, you know, this doesn't feel safe. Why are we doing this? Don't do this. And so that's where we begin to hit up against those sabotaging thought, you know, behaviors, thoughts. Um, and so that's where those traumatic events come, you know, come into play because they inform our behavior now in a very mindless way. We don't realize that we're doing it. Um, so we're protecting ourselves. We really are protecting ourselves. And my business coach says, please don't use the trauma word. You'll scare people. But really when it comes right down to it, trauma has a very, you know, you know definition of what people think about it. But it, it really is true. Our thoughts, feelings, and behaviors and experiences inform our behavior around money. Period. Well, and I think, um, so I, I would disagree with your business coach because I think the sweet spot for clients are the ones who are conscious that their trauma is impacting their present day reality, right? Mm -hmm. And they're ready to change that. You right, know, so then what? Changing it. So I mean, that's speaking for my myself, right? That just um, knowing that those stories are there, the faster that I can uncover them, I can move through them and change what's happening currently. So I think there's a, a sweet spot in the level of commitment of your clients of what they know too. So. Um, right. just, uh, it's a, I love having these kind of debates, right? About right. And honestly, it's that family paradigm. It comes very much down to if my family were blue collar and I step out and even go just to college, you know, you are separating from your tribe. So that's a discomfort. Yeah. That's an ick factor. Yeah. It feels yucky. And um, we don't talk about money in, in positive and affirming ways really in this country. I'm not sure about other countries, but we don't. So how are you not supposed to have the ick factor? Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's so true. So um, that, I love the way you put that. You're so articulate and well-spoken. I love the way you put it that in this country, we don't talk about money in positive or affirming ways. I grew up in a family where they didn't talk about money at all. But then when I think about anything that I heard <laughs> about money politically or community wise, it was people always, you know, begging for money, asking for money, wanting too much money, no positive uh, sense of what you said about money as appreciation, that what a beautiful mindset shift to focus on money as appreciation. I talk a lot like you do that money is energy. Mm -hmm. and I, 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 I love the word because I tell people when they pay their bills to write little smiley faces and hearts and uh, kiss them and send the money off with gratitude, right? Because the more we send it off with gratitude, Every dollar that we spend helps so many people. It's amazing, mind blowing when you think about the good that money does when it goes out. And then mm -hmm. if we're in that state of appreciation all the time, it leaves us really open to receiving. And so I'm curious if you see stories where people are really stuck on the receiving end, like they're great at giving and flowing it out, right? But then when it comes to actually receiving it in their business, they get really stuck. Yeah, I mean, I see that in a couple of ways. And, and I talked about psychic income earlier. A lot of the healers that I work with, they love giving. Yes. They love the healing work they do. Their income is the psychic income where they get to help and, and be of service. Sure. And so they get lopsided. <laughs> and so they start to neglect the actual income itself, the financial, you know, need to pay your bills and to have, you know, options. And so, 
um, I think that they get a little bit lopsided sometimes and they become givers instead of, and they have a real hard time putting a price tag on what they do. Um, because as a whole, a lot of times we push back to people who are healers or givers, you know, society can push back and expect them to give things away for free and expect them to be humble and not want money. Um, so there's a real disconnect there as far as, you know, what it means to be a healer what it means to price your services at a competitive rate that is congruent with what you want in your business and what people will allow for it. So there's just that jumbled up message about um, what that means. And so I think that it's really difficult for some people in particular to price their services in a way that's going to make them profitable. Nicole, do you, um, do you take people through a, a fairly standard approach to identifying these limiting beliefs and, and, and identifying maybe different types of trauma that occurred to them and then and building from that into a way that they're able to give and receive more or money without um, having those limiting beliefs pulling them back? I think there's a lot of approaches. I do have a system I take all of my clients through and I always say that money is just the entryway into personal development. So we start fast and furious with the money and eventually the money is the last thing that we're talking about anymore. Um, which is A-OK -okay with everybody involved. Um, but I do, I have a system. I'm a, I don't know if it says in my bio, I can't remember that I am a certified tapping into wealth coach. Um, and I was trained, you know, in money and mindset around this. And so I have a system that I take my clients through where we begin to identify their money, what emotions come up around it, what blocks may be there, what pa family paradigm is wrapped around their money if they've had traumatic events that are affecting their money now and their mindset around it now and their belief that it's possible to have more, you know, now. So um, there is a system I take them through and I use the EFT and tapping technique to help people really reveal and, you know, uncover some of the limiting beliefs that they're not aware of and to kind of bring down that negative charge around money. And um, I also, I also have a funny process that I take my clients through that I call it partnering with your peeps. <laughs> and so we get acquainted with the inner voices that are, are driving the bus, you know, at certain times and begin to partner with them to help us, you know, really have a positive mindset um, and not quiet them or get rid of them. I went so. through that, I went through that, uh, what, two years ago with the, um, the shadow stuff. The yeah. shadow work. Uh -huh. Well, Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Yeah. And Debbie Brown. Yeah, I know what you're talking Debbie about. Debbie Ford. Debbie Ford. That, that was actually a, a life-changing thing for me. I'd never had, uh, I told Manette this, I'd never had something where I could actually get a reasonably concrete visualization of, you know, actually put put faces to those, uh, those voices. And, and it was an extremely effective way and continues to be to, to sort of check in with myself. Yeah, that's neat. That's cool. It is because they have names and they have faces and they have messages for us. And when we keep trying to shut them down, they get louder and louder. And what you can actually do is partner with them. And I have my clients partner with them in their business. Like what role is this peep going to play in their business? Are they going to be the CEO? Are they going to be the note taker? Wow. You know, who are they going to be? And when all that comes together, it's quite beautiful what can happen to, to transform someone's business, not just from a money standpoint, but from a, like an inner, you know, inner mindset piece where there, there's unity and harmony and integration between all these parts. Yeah, do that. I know, it's super cool. <laughs> I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, and I love the concept of partnering, right? You know, rather than eliminating your inner critic or eliminating what was Billy and Bob and some of the other people on the bus, right? Just making, making you know, building partnerships because it's what makes us successful in business in the outer world most often are partnerships, right? And alliances and collaboration and compassion and connection. So I love that you're bringing that to the conversation around the inner world as well. And I'm curious, because I've um, actually had a few other clients and conversations with people. How, how did the shift from therapy to coaching happen for you? Abject burnout. <laughs> 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 There's the snark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get so I get so you know excited about what I'm talking about. The snark slips away. Um, 
You know, 18 years as a therapist working in all different settings. Um, the last job I had in direct service was as a clinical supervisor in a methadone clinic. So I was needless to say crispy and I needed to take a break. Um, and honestly, in, you know me already now to know I'm for real, for real. I real talk it. I was not interested in working with people ever again. Mm -hmm. So I went behind the scenes and did uh, pre-search for mental health and drug and alcohol <laughs> treatment for other people because I just could not deal with it anymore. Um, and I ended up working with my own life coach and she was a Martha Beck certified coach and she introduced me to tapping and um, and my time with her transformed my life and I got excited about people again and I got excited about using my talents to help others but from a more empowered and higher vibe way um, and so I jumped right at the chance to get certified in the first program I could get to get started in that was within my price point yeah. um, and it ended up being a money mindset coaching program and I really didn't think again that I would hang on to the money mindset piece of it mm -hmm. I would learn some stuff and then I'd do my own thing and the money mindset training um, it changed everything for me because I realized that as a social worker I had defaulted my income almost to the dollar every year oh, wow. that I had taken a vile poverty you know, that my family, I grew up in the South where you don't talk about money. And if you do, you're giving it away, you know, because it's, you're supposed to be giving. And, um, and I just realized all of these unconscious beliefs and vows and, and all this stuff that was running and just completely informing my day-to-day -day life so unconsciously. And once I got to the nitty gritty and it changed everything for me, I was like, I'm done. I want to talk about this. I want to help people with this. So, yeah. That's really neat. That's a beautiful are you, story. But are you, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated. You must still be able to really bring your your clinical background to bear on the life coaching, which that I mean that has to be a, a big plus for for you um, to be able to um, you know use whatever techniques you've learned outside of the clinical, you know, life coaching techniques mm -hmm. as well as the, the clinical side of things. I think it does. And I, th I think that is why the people who are attracted to me are attracted to me. You know, these are people who need to feel safe to do inner work. Um, they know it's more than just a one topic thing that they need to grapple with. You know, these are a lot of these are women who have done therapy around traumatic events and they feel like they got a handle on it, but then when they started their own business, it showed up again in a different way. And they're very disappointed because they thought they had done all that. You know, <laughs> they thought they oh had gosh, fixed it. I had a dime for every time I said that to my yeah. coach. I thought I was done with it. I thought I was done with this. And so because I have this clinical background, you know, not only am I held to a higher ethical standard around confidentiality, I'm really responsible for my clients, you know, in a different way. Um, because I can still, you know, because I'm licensed, I'm still held responsible whether I'm doing coaching or not. So I think that those right clients come to me, but also we can go deep. And so a lot of my clients have said, I, I feel like you're somewhere between therapist and coach. It's like that sweet spot in the middle yeah. where we can go deep and it's not scary. You know, I can handle all the things, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm just so thrilled to be able to help with them with that as well. So. And in terms of uh, dealing with all those things, I love the way you said that. How do you see women abusing themselves with their business? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. <laughs> I love this topic. Um, because I was doing this a year and a half ago and didn't realize well, I'm it. I'm so afraid of what you're going to say because I'm probably doing whatever you're about to say. So, <laughs> no, for, no. So do we have a minute just for me to show you how I realized? Yeah, I, totally. Okay. As much time as we need. So, yeah. All right. Good. Okay. So last year on the January morning, <laughs> about five o'clock in the morning, I was reading Liz Gilbert's book, Big Magic. Yeah, I love that book. Yes. And in this book, there was a story about a professor of forestry or, you know, I don't remember exactly what it was. And she was speaking to her incoming freshman class about nature. And she asked them, how many of you, you know, love nature? Raise your hand. They all raised their hand. And she said, how many of you think that nature loves you back? And none of them, they're all the hands went down. Mm -hmm. And so she went on to talk about why would you spend four years and all this money investing in something that you don't believe loves you? And I just had this drop down de divine download that my business did not love me. Mm -hmm. 
I loved my business, but it was not loving to me. And what that aha moment gave me was that I had learned how to be an employee from mean bosses. I had learned what it meant to be in business through abusive you know, channels. And so I had recreated a mean boss in my business, but it was me. And I didn't realize I was doing that. So I was literally abusing myself with my business by being relentless, never saying a kind word to myself, setting up a schedule that was not helpful. Um, I had fallen into this relationship with this business that was a default of negativity and toxicity because that's all I had known in my business relationships. So I really just set myself up to be miserable and burnt out within a year. And once I realized this, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and I was and you know, you talk about the inner critic, my inner Sadie said, well done, Nicole, you're now abusing yourself with your business. You know, you're stellar at that. So um, I started taking you? steps to stop doing that. <laughs> it's like, knock it off. And I see my clients do this over and over because they don't set up an intentional relationship with their business. They default into toxic ways of being in relation to their business through mean boss scenarios or just acting out toxic relationships that they've had in their, in their life. So it's another limiting belief. It really is. You know, and I have my clients write love letters to their business. I have them create an avatar for their business. You know, that's a thing, a person, a persona so that they can relate to it. Um, it's needed. Um, yeah. So that's, I even have like, a, I have a whole talk on this. This is one of my favorite things to talk about because I have been through it personally in a very short, in a very recent way, you know, so, um, and I think that it's just not necessary. We don't have to do this to ourselves because we left, I left my crispy situation. So I didn't dread Monday on Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Right. 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 Yeah. That's such a beautiful perspective. What a powerful question. I get Does a kick your business out of that. love you back? Yeah. I mean, you're sort of anthropomorphizing it. You give it, you give it, right. you embody your business so that you can. Brad used a big word. Hey. <laughs> We're snark. We're snark. <laughs> we, we have this conversation with our kids all the time about our love of big words. They but laugh you, at us. But you give it a, a body so that you can relate to it and so that you can have a, have a relationship with it as, a, as opposed to it just being a bunch of papers and computers and an office space and yada, yada, yada. It, right. It has a, because it is. We choose to go into business and, it, and our business is a relationship. And if we don't look at it that way, then we default again. Um, so, you know, my business, when you think about the anthem, you know, whatever the big word was, <laughs> I know what you meant. Anthropomorphism. My husband says that all the time. And I can't say it. <laughs> but I do it to the caps. I'm like, you're kidding. I do not do that. Um, <laughs> my business is the ghost or the spirit of Christmas present, not the Muppet version. Not the other ones, the big, like, fun, happy Muppet version of the ghost of Christmas present because I want him, I thought about who is he, who do I want him to be? I want him to be wise. I want him to be in the moment, but also to be able to see the past and the future, but to really be able to have a good time in the moment and be serious in the moment if needed to as well. So that is who my business is. I'm sure that will morph and change, but um yeah. Well, this is so another, this is another be, project for us. I know, but, but I got a blog it. post. I'll send it to you. That'd be awesome. We'd love to see it. Walk you through it. Active one, right? That's right. So, and it'd be fun probably to do it individually, and Which then means we have together. to combine all of our limiting <laughs> beliefs. <laughs> Oh. oh, but it's so fun. Yeah, but it's been, you know, it's, it's been one of the um, interesting conundrums, not really a challenge about building a business together. So we've only been in business together a year and it was my business before. And so as you keep saying, it keeps morphing, changing, growing and evolving. I I'm talking with my hands, aren't I? Sorry, Brad. But how can we get on the same page, right? And so yeah. we did an activity um, last week where we had to, you know, look three years in the future, what our business looks like. And I think probably for the first time, it was really aligned, right? So a part of our growth together has been that alignment, right? Of what does this all look like and what do we want it to be? And, you know, who do we want it to be when it grows up would be another fun question to ask. Exactly. 
So I love that. And I love that you're out speaking and talking about that as well. That's so cool. That's such a great perspective. Um, but I have to say, I love the part of your bio where you just say, make some damn money. Mm -hmm. And so I'm curious, all those healers and coaches and people that are starting out, how do you encourage them and support them to just go make damn money? <laughs> Um, well, you know, going through that system, it helps them begin to understand that these limiting beliefs they have, they downloaded and they're not their fault, you know, so they get permission to kind of begin to think of things in a different way. Um, but that tagline came from my clients. Because <laughs> when I was looking at, okay, so how do I want to kind of brand and all that? Um, and my coaching is called Wealth, Worth and Wisdom, you know, because it is about your, your internal worth affects your external wealth and the wisdom to really go through that process and to know it's evolving. You know, this is not a one trick pony type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so my clients, as I was asking them questions, they're like, well, you do say make some damn money a lot. <laughs> so, so because, you know, what I will say to them, I'm like, make some damn money. Just do something to create some cash yeah. and more will come. Because money attracts money, right? Yeah. Um, and so when they get stuck, you know, we'll do the tapping and we'll talk about the deep stuff. And then I'll be, you know, a little snarky and say, now go make some damn money <laughs> so that the, the money can attract more. Um, but it, it really comes down to that piece of me. I just want you to make some money. I want you to stop the shenanigans. I want you to believe in yourself. Let go of the limiting beliefs step up into your brilliance and make some money because you deserve it. Yeah. I yeah. love that. What an awesome cheerleader you are. I'm sure your clients <laughs> must just absolutely love you, Nicole. And people will get stuck until they make that dollar or yeah. that $10. Yeah. It, it seems insurmountable until the, mm -hmm. until something starts coming in. It's all up here until it's here, right? Yep. Yeah, it is. It's so true. And, and, you know, um, I'm always trying to encourage my clients to ask for more. It's just as easy to ask for $5 as $50 or $500. And the $500 clients are always the best clients. Mm -hmm. And yet I find that if their money mindset and their limiting beliefs around money haven't caught up, right, with who they want to be in the world, that there's work to be done, and they really cannot ask for that much money with confidence. And so teaching them how to stair step their pricing in a way, like you said earlier, that feels in alignment and in integrity with who they are in the moment, right? So it's um, mm -hmm. that whole pricing conversation is another really fascinating one. We could probably do a whole show. Yeah, we can do that. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we tend to work with a lot of creatives, freelancers, artists, you know, and it can feel like just sort of magical thinking when it comes to numbers. You know, people, a lot of our clients have magical thinking when it comes to money. Oh, of course. And, you know, and I've said this and you may have said this too, but people will say charge what you're worth. And once I got into this business for about a year, that began to bother me because I began to have a deep seated belief that we are priceless and you cannot put a price tag of worth on us. And so that's why I started saying, I want you to charge um, prices for your programs and services that's congruent with the vision for your business. Yeah. Because you're already worthy. That's a beautiful way to put it. I love that distinction. So Nicole, how can people get a hold of you if they want more information, more connection, and more snark? <laughs> well, if you want the snark, <laughs> definitely read my blog <laughs> or, or join my group. Um, well, they can go to my ever-evolving website, which is nicole.lewis-keeper.com. Um, there is a free gift on the welcome page called Seven Strategies to Fire Your Inner Critic. Nice. The free gift. And I really don't want you to fire your inner critic. You know, I, I actually want you to get to know it, but it's a catchy title, right? Yes. Um, so there's that. Uh, you can also catch me on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, which is Nicole Lewis Keeper Coaching. Quite active there. And I also have a, a group called Wealth, Worth, and Wisdom, which is hard to say when you have a list. Wealth, <laughs> Worth, and Wisdom. And it is a closed group, but it is a, there is no charge to be in this group. We just have it closed. But if anyone wanted to join that group, they would just have to ask to be added. And that's where the snarkastic fun stuff happens. Awesome, <laughs> so. snarkastic. And we'll have all that stuff in the show notes. Yes. A t-shirt. <laughs> 
magic. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we'll put all those links in the show notes and I because I love our conversation about I think even before we started that Nicole's last name is Nicole Lewis L E W I S. Keeper, K E E B E R. There is no L in that sentence. No <laughs> L in that word. No cookies either. I think it's cookies, no L's. Yeah. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love the work that you're up to. I want to say thank you again for sharing your stories and your journey with us. And we wish you continued success. And next time you come on, we'll talk about pricing. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Nicole. All right. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. and this is Brad Dobson. We're the Path to Profit Academy and the Path to Profit podcast. You can find more about us on our website at pathtoprofitacademy.com. See you next time.